Welcome to the Inside Nutley Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Greco, and I'm pleased to be joined today by former Mayor Commissioner Maura G. Tucci, Director, Department of Parks and Recreation. Welcome, Commissioner. Good afternoon, Tom. Last time we spoke on Inside Nutley, we discussed your background and your career as a longtime Nutley resident and business owner, your life, and your accomplishments. For this month's podcast, I'd like to focus more on the Parks and Recreation Department, as well as topics that concern our residents. Is that okay? That's fine. Let's recap a little. After moving to Nutley over 40 years ago, you were first elected to the Board of Commissioners in 2000, correct? That's correct. Were you always the Director of Parks and Recreation? From day one, yes. How did you decide on that department? This really goes back to my upbringing as, as one of five children and with parents that were always involved, my mom with the PTAs and the PTOs and my dad with the sports programs. Um, and my father ultimately became president of the Little League and director of uh, midget football. Uh, it was something that was always part of my life. And my dad was also you know, into the arts and singing and plays and, and sports, softball, football. So as a very young child, I was exposed to all of this and it was just something that I gravitated to. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the way we do elections in Nutley, you don't necessarily get to pick the department you want, correct? Well, you actually do get a choice, okay. all right? Um, it's not an official choice written into the Walsh Act, which governs this commission form of government. But the Nutley tradition is top vote getter becomes the mayor, and then you select your department in the order that you came in in the election. So in that election, I came in third, all right? Mayor Scarpelli, Peter Scarpelli came in first. Carmen Recchio came in second, so Peter Scarpelli went back to DPW. Uh, Carmen Recchio went back to public safety, and I was the third to pick. So I selected at that point the Parks Department. Those are some pretty big top-tier names in Nutley to come in and work with. Were you intimidated at all? Uh, I wasn't intimidated. Uh, I, I was an admirer of, of both of those gentlemen from afar for a lot of years. All right. And look, we all have our, our own ways and our own uh, style of doing things. All right. But they always had you know, what was best for the town in mind. So they were people that I admired coming up. What did you learn from them? I learned that it's not about any one person and it's not about uh, any one commissioner. All right, or what you can do or what you have accomplished, it's what you can do for the town. Because you're here to do better, to make the town a little bit better than you found it, to keep the town relevant, and to keep our people satisfied and in place. Because a stable community is a thriving community. I know we discussed this before on our last podcast, but I think it bears repeating. When people think of Nutley, almost certainly the first thing they think about is the beautiful parks that we have. Tell us what it takes to maintain not only their beauty, but that reputation? Okay, the first thing is you need a great team in place. And here in the Parks Department, I have a fantastic team, second to none. I have Frank DeMeo, Anthony Gagliardo, and all the ladies in the front that run our programs, all right, are second to none. They're intelligent people, they're dedicated, they're committed to this township. And to them, as, as it is with me, this is not a job, all right? This is a vocation, this is something that we love to do. And you know what? That love comes through, all right, in the product that we produce. But all of that comes from the top, uh, which is you. I set the tone. Yes, I do. But you need the horses to pull the wagons, all right? And I have the horses. And you need to give credit where credit is due because, you know, again, one person alone can do good things. Many people together can do great things. Here in the Parks Department, I'm, 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 and I am a little biased. All right. What we have accomplished are some great things. Working as closely as I have with the Parks Department over all my life, basically, um, and all the, all, the, all the many events that, that uh, the department puts on, and we'll, we'll get to that later, but I think all the dedication and the loyalty that you see in the people that work here, um, that, that's a great reflection on you, don't you think? You know what? Our, our philosophy here, our policy has been from day one that there are no bad suggestions. Everyone has a different perspective and a different thought process, but they're all valuable, all right? So even if you don't take them in their original form, all right, if they need to be modified, we modify them. We listen. We're good listeners. No one ever learned anything by talking. You learn by listening. So we listen to not only to the people that work here, but to our residents as to what they want and what they need. And as long as it's feasible, both 
physically and economically, it's something that we move forward on. Let's jump back to the parks for a minute. I think one of the, the, the coolest things about Nutley is that you can literally walk from one end of town to the other by going through the parks. I don't think there's any other town like that. I, I totally agree with you. I don't think there is another town that has a greenway. All right. You may have to cross a street here and there or go through a county park. Uh, but what we have here in, in Nutley, that are 110 acres of parkland, is something that's unique and something that will never be duplicated anywhere. How often do you hear people talk about that? I hear it all the time, all right? And every time I hear it, I get a nice big smile on my face, all right? And even when folks are interviewed for different publications and they're asked, well, you know, what do you like best about Nelly? Usually one of the first things, if not the first thing out of their mouth is, we love the beautiful parks, all right? So it's usually parked, educational system, services, and just the, the community feel of this township. There are a number of wonderful things throughout our park system in town. I want to touch on a couple of those. Um, let's start with the side of town that I grew up on. Um, tell us about the, the beautiful gazebo in Kingsland Park. The, the gazebo is a, is a very interesting story. That was a, uh, a gift to the township from the Nutley Rotary going back some years, many years. All right, And that, that gazebo has been used for many, many weddings. Uh, we've had small concerts in there. We've held small programs in there. And it's a focal point there in Kingsman Park. And I think the location of it is framed just perfectly with the park and the brook to the left and the bridges to the right. It's just a, a phenomenal gift and something uh, that Rotary has done for the town. And Rotary is continuing that commitment and that dedication to the town. Uh, we are in the process right now of redoing the front of town hall. All right. So we will be starting construction, you know, as soon as the weather allows. And the Rotary is offering to give us a water feature, be it a fountain uh, or a waterfall or something to incorporate into that. Now, I don't know that that's going to go in front of Town Hall, but we are, as part of that, we're also going to be constructing a monument wall for our heroes from the various wars. So we'll be doing that and incorporating that water feature into that, uh, that project. Let's move closer to the center of town and to our beloved mud hole or Memorial Park. And uh, a few years ago, the department started putting up lights throughout the mud hole. And uh, it's, it's really something that's, that's <laughs> to use a, a cliche, it's, it's lit up the town. It's something really cool to look at every night. Okay, again, this was an initiative, all right, that started with our parks people. They came to me and they said, we have this idea, let's light up the poles. So I said, what do you mean to light up the poles? They said, the poles are lit on top. They said, no, we're talking about the entire pole. They said, we can get lights, all right, that we can change the colors of for different events, whether it's green for St. Patrick's Day or red for Heart Healthy Month or blue for autism, and we can change them as, you know, as the events change. So I said, well, look, let's try it. So we tried it on one. It was a phenomenal idea, again, emanating from my people here in the Parks Department who love their parks and love their town, and we just did it throughout. We're looking to expand it, all right, but we have to get those poles installed in some of our other parks, all right, so we can spread that. It creates such an atmosphere, I mean, and in all the different seasons of the year, it's just, it's, it's like walking through a wonderland. You know, hey. something that I'm very proud of, and the people here, I am, I'm always proud of them, all right, but this time is another instance where they went above and beyond. As you well know, I'm, I'm a kind of a Disney freak. And uh, I have to say that if you walk through the park at night, uh, it, it's, it has a very Disney-like feel. And that's something that's really, really cool. Uh, and you don't really even have to walk through it. If you just drive by Vreeland or Passaic Avenue or Chestnut Street, uh, I don't know. Every, but for me, every time I drive by, it gives me a good feeling and I smile. And, and you know what? And it's not a big thing, no. and it's not an expensive thing, but it's something that's made a major impact. And I, th I think we all appreciate it. I do the same thing. I drive through or drive by, and I just look and I smile, and I'm just so proud that I'm able to participate with people of this caliber here that come up with these type of ideas that make our town that little extra special place. Moving closer to Chestnut Street, I know there's something very near and dear to your heart that was completed not too long ago, and it's the place of hope or area of hope that's that was another initiative that started uh with my parked people here uh at the time i was suffering from covid all right and i was out of commission and, and pretty sick 
And uh, my people called or called me, we stayed in contact when I could speak with them, and they said, we have this idea. You know, we're, we're losing some really great people in town to COVID. We have a bunch that are sick, and just a couple that come to mind, you know, Dr. Giuliano, a dear friend and, and a great doctor who succumbed to, to COVID. Um, Angelo Franicola is another, our, our former um, athletic director here in the township, and just a great guy who was always involved with children, great family. Um, Ann Rotunda, who didn't succumb to the effects of COVID, but I'm sure COVID didn't help her. All right, so we lost Ann and we lost some other great people. So we said, you know what, we, we need to recognize these folks because, you know, they were, they were part of the building blocks of this community. They were so involved and so giving. So my people came up with the idea of a place of hope, a place that would fit in with memorial parks, which were built as memorials to our veterans where people could walk through and reflect and remember their loved ones and different events that have occurred. They said, what about a place of hope for the people that we lost so that they're never forgotten? I said, you know what guys, that's a great idea. And they not only designed the place of hope, but they constructed the place of hope. So that's, that's one project that I am very proud of. And that was a little area in the park. I don't want to say it was underdeveloped, but it, it, you could have used some sprucing up and that fits in there perfectly and something that we're also really proud of. Another place that we go by and we just smile and, and remember important people and important events in our lives. So out of tragedy, we converted that into something that was positive for another because pretty much that's the only way. What about the upgraded dog park? The dog park. You mean the soon-to-be dedicated Dr. Louis J. Krupe Dog Park? Dr. Krupe, as you know, is the uh, the, the bird, uh, cat, and dog hospital of Nutley. Uh, Dr. Lou, as we call him, uh, is is just a phenomenal person, a phenomenal family. It's a whole family of veterinarians. Uh, they not only take care of our pets, but by take care of our pets, they take care of our people, and they're just giving people in the community. Uh, the dog park was a little run down and a little neglected, and you know I'll be the first to admit that. Uh, but we spruced it up, and again, our people uh, we we went we searched around and looked at you know some of the other designs and what we could do here in Nutley to make it our own, and we did. And our people uh, put that together, and we're just so excited. On May 11th, uh, we'll be dedicating that park uh, in honor of Dr. Krupe, and just to give you a flavor of the type of person that he is. There was also another vet that worked with him, uh, Dr. David Crick, all right, who worked at the clinic. And Dr. Crick was also another wonderful, giving, caring, loving, nutly guy. Uh, and Dr. Krupe asked me if we could do something in honor of Dr. Crick also. So subsequent to dedicating it to Dr. Krupe, we will also be doing something for Dr. Crick. And I know you're a big dog guy from way back. Yes, I am. I'm a, I'm a dog lover. I'm an animal lover. Okay, dogs are my preference, <laughs> but I I love all animals, and uh, you know it, it, it's often said that if you find a person that that loves uh, animals, usually they're a great lover of people also, and I think that's a that's a true saying. And you've also recently upgraded the Owens Complex as well, correct? Yes, it's actually it's the Owens football field. It's a multi-purpose facility. There's a football field, uh, there's a baseball field, all synthetic turf, and there's also a soccer field there. And we are, I'm proud to say, the first in the state to have a shadow back emblem, Nutley Raider emblem. If you stand, if you stand in the stands and look down on the field, you, you will see it. And it's it's just a phenomenal look. It's a super safe field. Uh, there, are, there are different standards that we need to meet to make sure that our fields are safe and that when, you know, our participants, you know, fall on the turf and inevitably, whether it's football or soccer or even baseball, um, they're, they're safe. All right. So they're not they're not injuring themselves. Uh, it was done with all grant money uh, from the state of New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. And uh, again, our people helped out in the design. We had a little experience. We've done a couple of fields before. We've also helped out in the oval in designing that. Uh, so we're somewhat expert in that area, and we're just, like, super proud of that. And if you look down towards the bottom where the uh, tennis courts were, uh, we've reconstructed two of the tennis courts, and we're also establishing six brand-new pickleball courts. 
to complement the ones we already have at the Bureau. And as part of that effort, our, uh, our pickleball coordinator, uh, Joseph Kakuza, is sponsoring a, uh, a tournament all right, to raise money for our Rally for Hope, which I'm sure we're going to talk about at some point. I know that our seniors are a very, very special part of our township, and that the Parks and Rec has several programs and events specifically tailored for them. I'd like to go through a couple of them right now and just get your, your views on them. Let's start with chair yoga. Chair yoga. Chair yoga is a low impact yoga program. Uh, it was uh, brought to us by uh, a friend uh, who was also a teacher for many years. She was retired and uh, again, in the spirit of giving back and helping folks, she said, I have this program, this chair yoga program that your seniors can participate in. I've done it in a couple of other places. I think it's something that can be really popular. So we tried it, our seniors love it. It keeps them moving, it keeps them somewhat limber. You know, as we get older, we all slow down a little bit, uh, but this, this helps them uh, because they not only are exercising to some degree, but they're also socializing. So to be out and to be social and to be active is, is our goal. What about Zumba Gold? Zumba Gold. The Zumba is a, is a dancing, exercising uh, program uh, that, again, is scaled down and it's appropriate for our seniors, all right, because full-blown Zumba Zumba is something that uh, is very strenuous, all right, and can take its toll on you. Uh, but again, it's been designed for our seniors to keep them active and to keep them moving. And again, another success. The Old Guard Club. The Old Guard. This is a great group, group of guys, patriotic fellows uh, who gather, they, they share memories, they share stories, they sing patriotic songs. I mean, they're here every Friday. Uh, it's just a, a great bunch of guys. It's an old Mount Leo organization and one that I hope sticks around forever. And then I think this is probably, if not the most important one, one of the most important ones, the Senior Nutrition Program. Nutrition program we do in conjunction with Essex County, all right, for those that are uh, food challenged, all right, and aren't getting the proper nutrition. Through this nutrition program, we can assure that the seniors that do participate all right, are getting the foods that they need and the essential vitamins, and they're, they're, they're being as healthy as they can be nutritionally. Then, of course, I, I think the event of the year, the May Day Luncheon. May Day Luncheon is always a big event in town. It's kind of our end of the year uh, event where we celebrate our seniors, all right, and we, it's, it's a big party. It's a big party. Our seniors love it. Uh, we, love, we love hosting it and just walking around and talking and, you know, sharing different stories with folks. And uh, it's something that we all look forward to. We all participate in. And for as long as we're here, we're going to keep on doing it. And finally, the senior picnic. That's kind of like the kickoff of spring, all right? Because after, after the winter and after people have been closed in for a bit, all right, people need to get out, all right? The weather's changing. You know, the flowers are budding. You know, the grass starts growing. And our seniors need to get out and they need to be active. All right, so through that event, uh, we keep them active, we keep them engaged, and uh, again, we learn from them based upon the experience that they've gone through in their lives. Because you, know, you, can, you can gain knowledge from a book, all right? You gain wisdom by speaking to people. As someone who has personally taken part in the recreation department programs for almost 60 years, I don't think I've ever seen it as all-encompassing as it is now. I think I last counted something close to 100 different programs. How do you manage all that and the parks? Again, just a fantastic staff, all right? We, we have a, a group of individuals, both men and women, all right, who program uh, all of our activities. Uh, they balance, all right, the needs of our people, whether it's sports, whether it's theater, whether it's creative writing. Uh, we have a, hand, a program called Handicrafters, which is a reading and art program, all right, that uh, we have a, a young lady with a PhD, who, who heads that. Um, so it's, it's a delicate balance uh, that we have, but again, we have professionals in the field uh, that are doing their very best for our township. I picked out a couple of random programs that I want to go through and, and just get your opinions on some of them. Um, let's start with pre-T-ball. Pre-T-ball. This is the, uh, the initial introduction to baseball. All right. Uh, the little ones are, are just adorable. Uh, you have to teach them everything from like which hand to put the glove on and you know how to throw a ball and how to swing a bat and how to run to the bases and what the correct way is. Uh, but it's a, it's a great way for our children to be exposed to baseball. 
and our philosophy here is let's expose our children to as many activities as possible and then they can select as they get older and gravitate towards what they really enjoy doing and it could be one thing it could be multiple things but unless given the opportunity they'll never know that that's part of our job happy ever crafty happy ever crafty this is the, the program that i was speaking about with the uh, the young lady who has a phd uh she's a great storyteller and through the story she's teaching life lessons uh, to our young ones, and then they take those life lessons and they sometimes convert them into art, whether it's uh, painting or drawings uh, or even some charcoals. Uh, they, they do a, a, an outstanding job. It's something that's very engaging. It's not a large program, but everything doesn't need to be large. It just needs to be a quality program. And it's something that we're very proud of. This next program has been exploding over the last couple of decades. And it's been around forever. Uh, I remember it uh, even before my time when I was a kid. And that's our, our and it's also very renowned. Our, our program has become very renowned. It's the, the cheering program. You know, going back, we had a football program that was supported by cheering. Now I think we have a cheering program that's supported by football. All right. We have over 300 young ladies all right, who are cheerleaders. We have rec cheering. We have travel cheering. We have cheering clinics. And we also have competition cheering. We have championship cheerleaders here in town. And to, to watch them perform with the intensity, it's full contact cheering. All right. It's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And it's just an, another way to bring another smile to your face. And that's a program that literally has hundreds of participants. Hundreds. And it's all managed by volunteers. Again, with the support of the Parks Department. But the volunteers carry the ball for us. Speaking of carrying the ball, what about tackle and flag football? Tackle and flag football. Let's start with flag because for some of our youngsters, they're a little hesitant about contact football. So flag football is a good way to indoctrinate them into the game and to teach them the principles of the game and the rules and regulations. All right. And some are just satisfied to play flag football, and that's great. Others make that, that leap into full contact tackle football. Our three teams, our C team, our B team, and our A team uh, are outstanding. And in any given year, we're either Super Bowl champs or uh, participating in the Super Bowl. Um, it's, just a, it's just a great program. We have many trophies around this office that you can see and enjoy. And again, the sense of accomplishment that our, that our children are learning about and learning how to dedicate, commit yourself to something and putting the time and the work in is a life lesson that not only applies to football, but will carry over into everything else that they do. The soccer program? We probably have right around 1,500 uh, youngsters participating in soccer, both uh, boys and girls. Um, soccer is a sport that everybody can play. You don't have to be big. You don't have to be strong. You don't have to be super fast. All right? You just need to apply yourselves and learn, and learn the rules. And the soccer is, is growing every day. You know, we have uh, the Red Bull Stadium right here in New Jersey. I know they're building another stadium, the first soccer stadium in New York. Uh, and soccer is taking off like, like wildfire. And, uh, you know, it's something that, again, that we support. I mean, anything that will help our children and help them to develop, uh, we're all in for. You know, we have our rec soccer teams. We have our traveling soccer teams. We have our Nessa soccer team, which is a private club team. All right, where the, you know, we trade off some, uh, some field time for expert instruction uh, to our youngsters. So it's a, it's a nice marriage and it, it complements you know, our children here and teaches them a, a better way. And for those that want to continue playing at a different level, it gives them that opportunity. Tell us about the wrestling program. Tom, the wrestling program is phenomenal. Over the last seven, several years, we've gone from 65 wrestlers to 140 wrestlers. And this is all under the direction of Michael Blanchard, who's done an outstanding job with all of the volunteers and all of the parents. And we've actually outgrown our wrestling room, which is about 2,000 square feet. So we're taking an adjoining room and we're making that also part of the wrestling room to add another 1,000 square feet. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic program. It teaches our children discipline. It teaches them commitment and it prepares them for the high school. So there's, there's not enough I can say about the wrestling program. It, they've won several different tournaments. They've done outstanding work and we just look forward to them continuing in this fashion. And uh, a recent state champion came through the night program? Or we did have, the Brand, Brand, correct, Brandon Taranzo, uh, who was a state finalist, uh, came up through our recreation program, 
All right. Michael Blanchard wasn't here at the time, but we had some other dedicated professionals. So these are the type of achievements and these are the type of goals that we look forward to. And uh, we hope that it just continues for us. One of the fastest growing sports around is, especially in Nutley, is lacrosse. Lacrosse was a, was a, a, a sport that I didn't have a lot of familiarity with growing up because it just, you know, when I grew up, it was baseball, football, basketball. And then, you, you know, you morphed into softball as you got a little bit older. Lacrosse is taking off like nobody's business. We have a great team of coaches, all right, that are growing the program. Uh, the children are coming out. And again, there's no one thing that's set for everyone. You need to expose the children to everything. And then they can select what they like. And lacrosse is catching on. And we're really happy. And we're really proud of the people that run the program because they do an outstanding Tell us about the theater production series. This is something that is near and dear to my heart. And uh, someday when we, we find a location and the wherewithal to do it, uh, we need a performing arts center here in Nutley. All right. We have so much talent that it's unbelievable. We have our theater program here in Nutley where we do anywhere uh, from one to two plays a year. All right. And this is in addition to what the high school does. Uh, we have clinics. Uh, we have our new Ohana uh, training sessions over the summer where the children are learn, learning different techniques uh, on how to perform and what they need to do and how to get their voices across and their, their lines across properly. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal program. The plays are outstanding, outstanding. And, you know, we recently had um, a, a, an event uh, for Nelson Matos, who was a young man who was suffering from some... Uh, medical issues, and it was a function that the Rotary, again, uh, sponsored, and I was there watching our children perform, you know, in addition to uh, the, the singing tenor Cvex, who are professionals, all right, and I'm not going to say that our children were just as good as the, the singing Cvex, but they were real close, all right, and I, and I saw the children there, and, you know, some of them are now young adults, but I remember them from when they first started with us here. So it's something that we're very proud of, it's something that we want to continue to grow. And uh, hey, look, sports and, uh, is not for everyone. You know? So for those that gravitate to the arts, fine. We're, we're right next to you. We'll stand shoulder to shoulder with you. Not many know that's under the Parks and Recreation Department. All under the Parks Department, exactly. And lastly, because it's coming up soon, uh, another Nutley tradition is uh, Camp Nutley, summer camp. Camp Nutley is such a success. All right, that when camp is over, our children cry because it's over. Usually children cry when they have to go because they don't want to leave their homes or they're a little insecure. Here it's just the opposite. It's so much fun. And we hire predominantly nutly young adults, all right, to supervise us. We have professional supervision and naturally we have medical care always on, on standby. But it's our kids taking care of our kids. So it's a, it's a great program. Uh, it'll be starting soon. Uh, we have many of our, our, our Nutley participants that apply for uh, summer camp jobs and our playground jobs. We also have our free playground uh, program that we operate, and it's, uh, it's, it's Nutley helping Nutley. I know that we just touched on a, a small sample of all of the things that are offered here at the Parks and Rec Department. Um, like we said earlier, there's something from toddlers to seniors something for everyone. And I think if, if people aren't aware, they should come down to the Parks and Rec or, or give them a call or go on the website and check it out because um, there's definitely something here for you if, if you're a resident. Um, but there's something that you did recently that I think uh, we, we need to draw attention to because it, it's, it's very important to any community, especially, especially Nutley. And that's you expanded the recreation programming for children with special needs. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, we, uh, we, had, we, we always had a special needs program, uh, but we, we, we knew we needed to enhance that program. Um, so we were, we were in conversation with several parents of special needs children, and we, we came into the Parks Department here, we sat around a table, and we just spoke about, you know, what they felt the needs were and, you know, at what times, all right? Because, you know, a special needs child that has to go to a program that begins at seven o'clock, it's, it's a long day. And uh, we, we, tried, we tried to work out a way where all of our children, all right, can participate in the same activities 
as those that don't have different needs. All right, and we did that, and that's what our parents wanted, and we're very excited that it'll be in the areas of music, it'll be art, it'll be sports, and uh, whatever else uh, we come up with. But it's something that's necessary, and it's something that uh, that we need to afford to our parents. I mean, we're here to help. We're a resource, okay? So, and it's not just for some of the people. We have to be a resource for everyone. It may be a cliche, but no one gets left behind, right? No, not nothing. We've discussed the programs and, and the sports um, and some of the activities. Uh, now I want to turn over to uh, uh, the events that the Parks and Rec put on throughout the year. Um, and there's a, there's a ton of them, just like everything else. But uh, I'm going to bring up a, a couple that, that, that come to mind for me. Uh, let's start with the, the grandpa and grandma uh, Christmas cookie decorating and Halloween decorating or painting, I should say. Again, smaller events, all right, where we're fostering and we're uh, encouraging that whole sense of family. It's something that many of us have grown up with, but in this new fast moving world, sometimes that gets lost. So whatever we can do to bring that back, all right, that's what we do. So with the uh, decorated Christmas cookies, we have the grandparents come in, many of them I know, all right, with their grandchildren, because I'm here with my grandchildren, all right, and we decorate our cookies and our, our grandchildren are just thrilled to, you know, to do one other thing with us that's outside of the home. And it's a big deal. It's a special event. I like the pumpkin painting, all right, for Halloween, we come in and we do it together. All right, and there's no one pumpkin that's any better than the other. They're all unique, they're all beautiful, and all of our children are, are, are just great. And as grandparents, you know, you, you always appreciate your children. Grandchildren have a special place in your heart. Commissioner, could you imagine if you had a dime for every smile you've seen at those events? I'd be a very rich man, yeah, <laughs> very rich. Two big events just took place a few weeks ago. The Easter egg extravaganza, did I say that right? egg extravaganza and the flashlight egg hunt tell us about those events all right let's start with the extravaganza the extravaganza again is for our younger children all right we have a petting zoo there we have face painting we have easter bunny hay rides which is something new to nutley uh we have the easter bunny comes and this year and just worked out this way it wasn't planned this way i was fortunate enough to take a picture with just about every child that sat down with the Easter Bunny, all right? Which just kept me smiling from the time it started till the time it ended. And I think the children loved it and I think some of those adults loved it even more. <laughs> How much candy did you eat that day? Uh, I try to hold back, uh, it's not easy, but I ate a substantial amount. Because <laughs> later on that day, because of the weather, it was the flashlight egg. Yes, the flashlight egg. Now this is for our older children, all right? And again, we do it at dusk because that's when the flashlights become effective and we hide a golden egg. And whoever discovers the golden egg, and I you know it's hidden in gold different places every year, win a giant Easter basket, all right? That's filled with Easter chocolate and uh, Easter eggs and uh, the marshmallow peeps and all the good stuff that we probably shouldn't be eating, but we can enjoy at least once a year. Again, going back to the smiling, it seems like all these events are predicated on producing as many smiles as possible. Um, and that goes for the next event I was going to ask you about, and that's the Halloween Spooktacular. Tell us about that. The Spooktacular is, is something that we started doing because we wanted to afford our children, you know, the experience of trick-or-treating and, you know, a Spooktacular with scary areas and spook rooms in a safe environment, all right? And, you know, we, we have great parental supervision here in Nutley. Our parents are all over our kids. And if you go around town, you know, no matter what block you're on, you'll always see the parents close by, giving the children enough room, you know, to spread their wings a little, but always watching because you need to do that. So we said, you know what, let's do something here for those that, that are not able to or don't want to go block by block. So we do it here and the spectacular has been, again, a resounding success uh, for many years and something that we're going to continue to do. I think this next one may be the most popular one of all, the Princess Ball. The Princess Ball. Oh, my goodness. We, we all have princesses in our homes. <laughs> Whether it started with our children and now going down to our, to our grandchildren, uh, we have Cinderella's carriage here drawn by a, a huge white horse 
all right? The smiles on those little princesses is, is unbelievable. It's beyond words. Um, and th another added extra to that is the, the young ladies that come and dress up like some of the Disney princesses, all right, are former participants here. They're Nutley residents. So the older lady, young ladies come back, all right, and interact with the young ones. It's just a great night. Everyone gets dressed up. Uh, we have refreshments, usually pizza and ice cream. We have the carriage rides, and it's just, uh, again, another enchanting evening. Another two mainstays in the town are the summer and fall festivals. Um, they went away for a little while uh, during COVID, but they've come back in a big way. It did, and it'll be back again. This is our, one of our, uh, our blowout events. All right, we have multiple bands, we have food vendors, we get anywhere from eight to 10,000 people attending. We block off Franklin Avenue and we do that in conjunction with the Public Safety Department because we need the police to help us and Commissioner Petraco, and we're very thankful. And all the commissioners and the mayor, you know, all jump in and help us with this. And it's a town-wide event, all right? And it's an event that people look forward to. And usually you, you attend that event and you see people that perhaps you haven't seen in years. So you're reconnecting, all right? You have these nutly connections that maybe were a little strained or, or a little distance, distant that come back together, you know? So we have, we have participation here in Nutley, not only from our folks that live here, but even from folks that previously lived here and for whatever reason are not with us here anymore. One of my personal favorite programs is the Living Memorial Program. Can you speak to that a little bit? Oh. The Living Memorial Program is a, is a great, great program. And that program was started on the former commissioner, Frank Cacciola. Uh, and the head of the uh, Shade Tree Committee at the time was Mr. Anthony Biondi Sr., all right, who was on vacation and witnessed this program. He came back and had the story goes, he, he, he sat down with Frank and said, Frank, I went to this program. It was so moving and so touching. This is the like, ideal for nothing. So Frank Cacciolo said, okay, well, you know, let's, you know, let's give it a shot. And they did. They started. And I think the first year, maybe they had, you know, five to ten trees that they planted. Uh, we have taken it to another level. Uh, we not only plant trees in honor of uh, loved ones that are lost, but we also have memorial benches. And we've planted over 4,000 trees. And we're in the hundreds of benches where we may very shortly be moving out to streets. Uh, because we're running out of room in our in our parks, uh, but that's a program that starts uh, in May. Uh, people people start soliciting us, you know, early on from the beginning of the year. Uh, it's just so touching and so moving, and it's it's a way to remember those that you love, you know, through through a living, blooming tree, and it just creates a lot of great memories and uh, just some 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 great events and some great things that happen. That truly is. I mean, it's just to, to walk through the parks and, and, and see the, the trees and the dedications and, and the benches. It's just uh, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. And, uh, I, you know, I'm not familiar with many other towns that do that. There might be. But but for me, uh, just just to walk through the park, uh, uh, I'm sure like many, it provides a lot of comfort for a lot of people. A lot of comfort, a lot of comfort. And it provides focal points. All right, for people to go and to remember, you know, those that they've lost. All right, and listen, we've all unfortunately suffered losses, you know, um, but it's it's always good to remember. You know, it's a, a life not wasted is a is a life that's remembered. I'd really be remiss if we got through this podcast and I didn't mention something that, again, so many of these things are are near and dear to your heart, and I know that just by knowing you for uh, for such a long time. But it's the uh, the rally for hope. We have transitioned uh, from the American Cancer Society to Relay for Life. We've created the Greater Nutley Cancer Foundation, a 501c3, uh, registered with the state of New Jersey. And now we have the Rally for Hope, where we will be raising dollars for uh, cancer victims and uh, cancer survivors and support and research. And uh, the reason for this is it will give us greater discretion all right, as to where our dollars go. All right, and they will, they're not only limited to uh, the township of Nutley, that's our primary uh, a, a concern, uh, but also friends of folks from Nutley. All right, we have an, an independent board of clergy people and just great community people. Um, 
that are going to be uh, running this. So they'll be taking applications, they'll be making decisions, and we'll be keeping our Nutley dollars here in Nutley, serving Nutley people and friends of Nutley. Last year you were the Eternal Flame recipient. Tell us about that honor. It was, it was something that caught me completely off guard, all right? Uh, quite frankly, I didn't think I was worthy of it, okay? Uh, the, the people that ran uh, our event and raised the money were the team leaders and our coordinators, and they did an outstanding job. And, you know, when, when you hear the stories and you, you, know, you, you hear about the successes, um, you know, you're always pleased, you know, and you don't always have successes, but you do your best. All right, you always do your best. Uh, to, for me to receive that uh, was a total, a total shock. And I believe I was nominated by our folks here in town uh, that run it, and it was sanctioned by the American Cancer Society. Uh, it's here, the eternal flame. It, it's, it's a great honor. And uh, again, it was never about credit for me. All right, it was about doing something positive for people that needed some help. Commissioner, I've known you a long time, and and. I know you've never been one to take credit, but unless I ask this question, no one's going to know. So I'm going to ask it. How much money have you raised? We have raised close to $1.6 million. Well, <laughs> I think that kind of says it all. That's that's a, a very well-deserved award. I'll, I'll share that award with, with everyone else that, that participates in that and made that a success. If I think back, I think I first got involved with Nutley Recreation in second or third grade, then stayed with it all through junior high. In high school, you take a little break because you're either playing high school sports or, or not playing. But then right after high school, got right back into it with uh, uh, men's basketball, men's softball, men's volleyball, all the way through my 50s. Uh, and now, uh, for, for better or worse, I'm ready for the senior programs. But I think a lot of people relate to that, especially in Nutley, relate to that scenario. They do. And you know what? And that's why we have all of these different programs, because we don't want any disconnects here in Nutley. We want you from when you're a toddler to when you become a senior, okay? And for as long as you want to participate, we're going to have something for you. We're going to keep you connected. And again, we're going to keep you as part of this community, all right? And it, it starts with the people, all right? I mean, any good, successful town like Nutley is because of not only the makeup of the town with all of our, our neighborhoods that are all different, all right, but all quality neighborhoods, but because of the people. The people, when the people buy into the township and they believe in the township and they believe in, in what their leaders are doing, we all win, all right? And that's why we, we are the successful, attractive town that we are. I can't let you go without asking you uh, some of the questions I asked the other commissioners with regard to the town overall. Um, let me throw a couple words at you and, and, and see see what your feelings are. Let's start with redevelopment. Listen, and we are a family town, all right, uh, but we, we need to stay relevant and we need to continue to evolve, all right. Uh, my view of life in Nutley may not be the same as a younger person's view of life in Nutley, all right. But we want to keep our, our good, solid, nutty people in town, and we want to attract like-minded people. So we need to develop, all right? We need to develop, and we need to continue to evolve, all right? Otherwise, we're not going to progress. I mean, we have many projects on the burner. Uh, you know, we can start with the Ciccolini project. I mean, it's taken longer than any of us expected, but we want to make sure we get it right, all right? And, you know, developers have a perspective and town leaders have a different perspective. And on the Board of Commissioners, we all have different perspectives, all right, where we, we try and be as progressive as we can while maintaining the character of the township, all right, and the traditions of the township. Um, on three, I think, uh, I think that's been a, a, a rousing success over there. Uh, we were told when we first uh, sat down with the people from Hoffman LaRoche that, uh, we won't get anything even close to Hopkins the Rose for 25 or 30 years. Well, we're in like half of that time. That place is fully developed. You have Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine, where several of our, our Nutley youngsters are attending. Uh, you have I say you have like the Japanese pharmaceutical company. You have Modern Meadows. You have innovative um, 
medical facilities in there. There's all kinds of great things going on there. You have Ralph Lauren, you have Quest Diagnostics, and it's only half of it all, all right? We're just talking about, you know, the Nutley side. But again, you know, there were a lot of hurdles that we needed to jump to get through that. Right? Because again, for developers have a certain perspective, all right, and certain goals. And we have our own perspective here as town leaders where we need to protect our people and protect our neighborhoods and make sure that the, the impacts that are made by some of this progress are not negative impacts. And I think we've, we've been successful with that and it's still a work in progress. So we'll continue with that. How difficult is it to maintain a tradition but yet progress at the same time? It's, it's a very, very delicate balance, all right? Number one, the, the fiscal structure needs to blend in, all right, to, to the township and to the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, you need to talk to people. You need to listen to people, all right? Um, none of us have all the answers to everything, all right? But as long as there's open communication, all right, we can bring different uh, aspects of development into town. I mean, as part of that, that whole project, that chicanery project, uh, there's, you know, a green area uh, that's being incorporated into that. That will be surrounded by a restaurant or two, all right, which is another gathering place for our people, some place to go, some place to talk, some place to meet new people, some place to expand the existing Nutley family. I think that's how we do it, all right? There's no one good answer to anything or one good concept. There are many good ideas out there and many great concepts. And we as town leaders need to listen to our people and try and incorporate those into what we do. You know, I think that's another thing about Nutley that, that uh, really goes on notice, especially from the keyboard warriors on, on social media. Um, we do have a different form of government. There's five commissioners. But, you know, as far as I know, and, and again, I've lived here all my life. It's over 60 years. Um, and, and even it's always been like this, but even more so to this day, it's amazing that all five commissioners are approachable. Um, if someone has a question, uh, for you, uh, you're at the pool store every day. Every day. And if they have a question, you know, if, if they need an answer, they'll get it from you. Just give them a call. It's the same way with the other four commissioners. They're available. They're approachable. It's not like some city where, you know, you can't get close to the mayor or, or the, the, the senator or whatever the politician is, the city councilman or whatever. Um, it, it, it's a unique, unique thing, and I think people miss that, the fact that uh, you are available and you are approachable and you're not removed from the public that you serve. I'm going to ask you, you may not always like the answer, but you'll get an honest answer, right? You know? And you'll do what you can. Absolutely. Look, the Ciccolini Project will impact me just as much as anyone else. I live two blocks up. All right. So what happens there, all right, will, will affect the way my family lives and how we interact. I mean, it's great to be able to walk down to Jim Dandy's or, you know, go to Nutley Wine Shop or Ralph's or, you know, some of the other places. You know, we're, we live here. This is our home. OK, so we're invested here. All right. We're not just politicians. I like to think of us more as community service people. When you look to the future, how do you see Nutley moving forward? I see us continuing uh, being a family place. Uh, we are a township of neighborhoods, which is separate and distinct from a lot of places, all right, that are dissected by different roadways and, and what have you. Um, we're a town of, of, of people that care about where they live. And even the people uh, that we're attracting into Nutley, and I see many of the young families that are moving in because their children are participating here in the Parks Department in our programs, all right? They're, they're like-minded people, you know? Uh, so where, wherever we wind up and whatever we look like, I don't think we'll ever lose the essence of what this township is. And, you know, volunteerism, you know, has been uh, on the, at the forefront. Uh, for many years and nothing probably from the beginning all right I, I don't see that diminishing i think people are looking for what we have here all right the neighborhoods the values the family atmosphere and the togetherness that we have there really are no strangers in nothing all right there are there are people that we don't know yet 
all right, that we're meeting and our family, our Nutley family continues uh, to expand, but everyone's included, everyone's accepted, all right? If you want to contribute and you want to be part of the positive force, then please come to Nutley. What are your favorite things about Nutley? What are my favorite things? Well, I need to start with my parks because I absolutely love them. And, you know, I drive by and I look at the parks and I say, wow, these parks are closer to golf courses, you know, than they are to like municipal parks. Um, our neighborhoods, our neighborhoods are like a throwback, you know. Our children can still, you know, ride their bikes in the street or, you know, play baseball in the street or basketball. Uh, neighbors are friendly, all right, no matter what their background or, you know, what their ethnicity, you know, you, you move on a block, you become part of the block. Okay, um, I think it's just the sense of, of who we are and, you know, what we what we put forward, you know, as as nothing people. And I think that's contagious. And I, and I see that as something that's going to bode very well for us in the future. What do you like most about being a commissioner? I think the most enjoyable part is seeing the expressions on the faces of not only our little ones, but our young adults, our parents, our grandparents. And, you know, I come, I'm one of four children. So I have a relatively large family with the nieces and the nephews and the great nieces and, and all that. Uh, but every day is a new adventure in Nutley. And every day my Nutley family continues to expand. Some people that I know and I've seen on a regular basis, other people that I've never seen before that, you know, have become part of the family and, you know, just people that want to contribute and make this place a little bit better than when they found it. And that was always you know, the thrust of my initiative from the beginning and something that I, I carry with me and try to continue to do every day. As we said at the start of the podcast, you've been a commissioner for over 24 years. If you ever sat down and thought about the thousands of hours you've spent in this volunteer position, do you think you'd do anything different? I'd probably do a couple of things different, but for the most part, no, no. We have uh, rebuilt all of our playgrounds. We have uh, improved all of our fields. Uh, we are staying current with the times. We have educated people that work here uh, that program our events, that maintain our parklands. Uh, no, this is, uh, this is a great adventure, and I've been on something that I'm very honored and proud to have done and uh, hope to continue to do. Uh, but... No, I don't, I don't think there's very much I would do differently. Allow me to correct myself. It's not a volunteer position. You make a whopping $2,200 a year, I think, or around $2,200 a year. I should know that by now. I've asked all the commissioners multiple times, but uh, uh, $2,200, around $2,200 a year. I just wanted to clarify that. Back to this. It, it, as we're doing this podcast, it's it's really uh, your businesses, your, your pool businesses busiest season of the year yet here you are again spending a couple of hours on this podcast on behalf of Nutley why do you still do it why do I still do it well my my brother and partner Gerard would uh <laughs> would probably be making faces right now uh why do I do it because I'm committed here this is my home this is my children's home this is where my grandchildren are all right my whole family is here all right this is where we belong so for as long as we belong here, it's as long as I'm going to continue doing this. Commissioner Tucci, thank you so much for joining us on Inside Nutley once again. My pleasure. Thank you, Tom. It's always a pleasure.